Hello my friends, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and today we're playing Claire's song from the Fiddle Time Jobbers book. Now earlier on in this series you may have noticed that we have skipped this song because I wanted to save it for when you were a little bit further advanced and that moment has come now so let's play Claire's song and let's play three notes slurred. So let's try and play three notes to a bow this time which means that we're not going to change in the middle of the bow uh, like we used to do when we played two notes slurred. No, we're going to share our bow equally amongst three notes. So every note gets roughly, roughly, I say, a third of the bow. Okay, so are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Well done, that's a lot of notes in this song and I hope you've managed. If you get a little bit slippery at either end of your bow, it may be that you haven't quite got enough rosin. So put some rosin here at the heel of the bow and also at the point. Because now that you play three notes slurred, you're going to use the bow and make it that little bit longer. So that is the aim of our game today, is to make your bows as long as you absolutely can. So that it's easier to fit three notes in. So. What I'd also like you to make a habit of from this moment forward, at least try and make a habit of, is that rather than reading one note at a time, try to read a whole bar at a time. Now that is a whole different way of looking at things. I do appreciate that. And people will say, oh, that gets very confusing. Uh, but once you get into a habit of doing that, it makes it much more smooth the way you play because you just know much better what's going on. And it is very similar to when you, for instance, read a book. Um, when we read a book, we don't read every letter, but we read a word and then perhaps, and those of us who read a little bit more quickly, read, skim read the whole of the next sentence as well. And that's very similar to when you play a piece of music. You don't just look at every individual note, but you look at the whole bar or maybe even a couple of bars ahead and that is something new that I would like to add to your playing, if possible. So let's practice that, shall we? And let's have a look at how we can make that work in this piece. So we're going from the beginning. And before we start, I want you to say in your head, OK, we're playing 2-1-0. All right, so we know already what the first bar is going to be. As soon as you've started playing your first note, see if you dare look ahead to what the pattern is in the second bar. One, two, three. I'm 
a great fan of spotting patterns and I'm hoping that by reading ahead you've spotted some patterns here. And what I sometimes get is that people say, while they play the middle note, the low A, oh, it's the same as the beginnings. If you spot those kind of things, you will find your playing gets a lot easier straight away. So let's now carry on with line two and let's do the same thing. Are there any similarities in this line? So here we go. I don't give away the answer to that question. One, two, three. that there are some sections that are extremely similar. There's one bar that's exactly similar in the second half of line two, uh, but it's not entirely similar. And it's for you to pick up on those things. That would be handy. So let's try that again when we do line three. So read ahead what it's starting like. Okay, have we had this bit before? One, two, three. before we've played it in the first line. Now you can perhaps now see what a little step it is to memorize this piece. Um, we know now that line three is exactly the same as line one so might you know it off by heart. Perhaps next time when you play it you know it off by heart already and that is a very good thing about violin playing. Now let's play the fourth line and I'm wondering if we have had sections of this before. So that is my question to you. Have we had sections of this line before? We'll talk about this in a moment, shall we? One, two, three. that line four is slightly different. There are some similarities and also some distinct differences. If you compare bar 29, which is the first bar of the fourth line, and compare it to bar 13, you can see that it's just the opposite. Bar 13 is A1A and 29 is 1A1. So there is some overlap there. Now, the second bar of the second line is E1E, Whereas the second bar of the last line is A1A. So that is similar, but we're staying on the A string, you see. Um, and then towards the end of this line, we've got uh, that first finger on the G string. That is very distinct, isn't it? That comes back. So bear that in mind, those things, that you've got some, some overlap there and some things that are very similar, but not quite the same. This is a process that... I would like to start off with you today and is by no means finished after one lesson but if you bear this idea of finding patterns, reading ahead, if you start to embed that in your playing you'll find many pieces that are coming up a little bit easier. You see that's why I'm telling you this. So let's now go back to the beginning of this song and think about something else. You know uh, for, if you followed these lessons that I have always got specific things that I like to improve in each piece. Now we have worked on reading ahead that made our music much more smooth and this time I would like you to make sure that there are no jerks in your bowing. So try not to speed the bow up at the end of each bow stroke ready to go on to the next bow but round 
every bow stroke off rather so I want every bow stroke to slightly slow down before you pick up the next new bow stroke. Uh, I hear this quite a lot and um, perhaps that will that will ring a bell with you or maybe you're already doing that I don't know. your jerky bow suddenly you get ready for the new bow and you want to do just the opposite is not increase the speed of your bow but slow it right down so let's use this opportunity this time we play it to find out what's happening to your bow one two three so we could perhaps get a little bit more practice out of that. Now you've noticed that when you play at the point of the bow, hopefully you've noticed this, that your fingers are much more straight on the bow compared with when you play at the heel of the bow. And I want you to make your hand as soft as you can so you get a little bit more flexible fingers. Um, and that is something that we'll, we will be developing over time. But perhaps since you're using nice long bows, you might already let your fingers be manipulated by the bow as it were. So we're going to go from the middle and we're playing lines three and four and I want you to soften up your bow hand so that A, you don't have any jerks at each uh, change of bow but also to let your fingers perhaps move already a little bit on the bow. One, two, three. with you today is to go over some of the letter names of the notes and I'm going to use the last line as our example and I want you to think with me about what the notes are called so at, the, at bar 29 we're starting on a B then comes an A then a B and if you're super clever you think about the note before I say it so that you don't let me point it out to you but you work it out so the second bar starts on an A, then comes B, A, A, B, A, D, F sharp, E, D, that very low note is an A, D, E, D. And it is a good habit to occasionally just pause for like a minute or two just to go over these letter names because by the time you start to play in an orchestra the conductor might say we're going to start on the E in bar 25 and you need to find your place very quickly then so you need to know what the letter names of the notes are. Well done, super practice now. 
Uh, let's play it one more time and this time we're going to add some louds and softs. So we're starting mezzo piano, we're staying mezzo piano until the end of line two where we're playing crescendo and diminuendo. So you're going to come a little bit closer to the bridge. Remember we were saying there are three ways of playing louds and softs. One is using more bow. Um, hopefully you cannot use that much more bow because you're already using the whole bow. The second method was coming down, coming towards the bridge a little bit more to play louder. And the third method was lean into the string, play with a little bit heavier a bow arm into the string. In other words, press a little bit more onto the, onto the bow to get a little bit louder. And then you do the exact opposite towards the end of line two. So you're going away from the bridge, making your bow strokes a little bit shorter and pressing a little bit less. Then lines three and four are both mezzo piano, but right at the end, we're having another diminuendo. Can you see that hairpin thing? Which means take the volume away and you end really softly. There is also a ritenuto, which means you slow down a little bit towards the end. So this is our last go. So let's see if we can integrate all those, these ideas, shall we? One, two, three. <laughs> well done, very nice play. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. Any comments or questions that you may have, do write them in the comments section below. I do get to see these, so I will respond. As always, I'm going to ask you again to subscribe this, to this channel if you haven't already done so, and hit that bell button because I am going to um, finish off this whole course and keep on recording until we've recorded all the pieces in this whole book. So lovely to see you today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>